My name is Asia Sampson and today on Baptism Overland, generic air compressors and are they worth buying? Any of you watch Westworld? Like, are you caught up? Did you watch the last season? Like, I just got into it this year. I actually binged it in about two weeks. It's pretty good, but I will say, without giving away a ton of spoilers, is that I like the first two seasons of that show a lot better. The last couple of seasons, it just started getting really confusing when they started cloning the same person over and over and over again, like all in different time periods. And I just started getting confused as to who was who. Whom or who, who, whom? But yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because when you have a multiple of different things, but they all look the same and behave the same, it starts to get confusing because you start to wonder which is the original and which is just a copy of a copy. This is the Gobage 12 volt air compressor. And if you're looking at it going, well, that looks kind of familiar. Uh, yeah, it's given off that Napa Auto air compressor vibe. And it kind of also even looks like the Smitty Built air compressors. Look, there's no denying that many of these companies, even the ones we love and covet, use the same manufacturer as other companies. And these manufacturers just create the same product and then they just rebadge it with that company's logo. Not all, obviously, but one of the things I do whenever I'm buying new gear is I try to find out if that company is manufacturing things in-house. Now I'm saying generic and not cheap because generic doesn't necessarily mean cheap. It just means it's being produced by the same manufacturer and then being rebranded for different companies. Although if a company is producing their own stuff in-house, that will add to the cost, but it's also going to be of higher quality. If you were to go to Amazon right now and look up 12 volt air compressors, you're probably going to see this one by Gobage and then go down a couple of listings and you're going to see the exact same one looking exactly the same with just a different company logo on it which then leads to the question well are they any good and is it worth buying them now to figure that out let's compare this to ones that we know and love this looks like the Napa air compressor. The Napa air compressor is beloved. There's a whole cult following on it. Unfortunately, Napa doesn't make it anymore, but I believe it ran right around 120 bucks or so, and sometimes even 100 bucks. Then you have the Smitty built one, which is a reliable air compressor that many off-roaders and overlanders like to use. That one runs about 200 bucks. Now, I don't wanna be comparing this to the bigger branded air compressors, like the ones you get from Viair or ARB, just because because you're paying premium for those air compressors. This is more for the run of the mill, I just need an air compressor as a backup or in my rig for emergency purposes. Now just going through this one, first impressions, everything feels really well built. Like everything is pretty much metal except for a few plastic pieces here and there and you can definitely feel the weight of this thing. It feels rugged, it feels like it's not just gonna break on you, it doesn't feel like there's any parts that are loose. Right over here you have your power button, if you can see that. Here is your power button to turn it on and off and you have a little bit of a circuit breaker button here to kind of cut it off if you need to. Now up here is your air outlet and they used a male connector here, which kind of sucks because when I built my hose system, my single line and my four-way inflator, the ends of them I also used male and I used male connectors on those ends because I figured one day I might get an ARB air compressor and the outlet for that is female so I can't use this unless I make some sort of modifications which I can do the hose that they give you is right here and that's female and it's a quick connect as well it's kind of floppy and you have to really pull this back and then lock it into place it's kind of crooked on there it's not like straight so you have to pull this all the way back put it in and then it locks in place but it's also kind of easy to come out just one little tap and it comes out right away kind of sucks but as soon as you're locked in there it doesn't move you see this it just does not like line up really nicely that's that thing I mean that's just really nitpicking now down here is the power cord comes right out and then goes to alligator clamps and you plug this directly to your battery they're fine they're grippy they're good now with this kit you obviously get the hose the hose is not in one piece the chuck actually comes separately which I, I, I can see why in case you ever need to just replace just this part you're not needing to replace the uh, uh, entire hose. I am not really a big fan of these kind of styles of uh, chucks. I always lock them in and somehow or the other they will always come out. I prefer the kind that I used for mine which is more of a 
quick release type of system. And then you also have a trigger on mine, which you don't hear. Like it's not a trigger system. You have to turn the air compressor on and off. As opposed to my system, once you plug this onto a tire, you can control the amount of air you're bringing in. And when you let go, you'll be able to see how much pressure you have so far. Well, with this, I had plugged it in and then I would have to turn it off on the air compressor to see what pressure I'm getting, turn it back on again, and then turn it off again, versus just leaving the air compressor on, pressing the trigger, and then being able to see how much pressure I have in the tire so far. You also get a couple of different nozzles, so if you need to blow something up outside of your vehicle's tires, you have that. So you have like one for your ball, you have one for like other different inflatables, so you can just pick and choose whichever one. Comes with like three. And then obviously, your instructions. This has a 6.35 CFM fast air intake, direct drive pure copper motor with a 60 millimeter cylinder, all metal body, 150 PSI max pressure, and 225 degree Fahrenheit cutoff. So if it goes too hot, hotter than 225 degree Fahrenheit, this thing will shut down. Comes in right about $159.99 or 160 bucks. Now compare this to the beloved Smitty built, they pretty much look exactly the same. Only difference, that, that Smitty built is pretty much all black, has a big Smitty built logo in the front. And then instead of a male end over here, it has a hose coming out of it so you can kind of move it the way you want. The Smitty built one has a built on cleanable air filter, which this one doesn't seem to have. It also has anti-vibrate rubber feet. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen here. Uh, storage bag included. This does come with a storage bag, although this is the bag here. It's nothing special. I mean, it's just a bag and the material doesn't feel very heavy duty. Like I have a feeling this thing will rip. If you're gonna use this, find a better bag because this one is just what it came with. The Smitty Built 2781 is 5.65 CFM. So that's a little bit lower than this. And that one comes in at a cost of about a hundred and uh, I don't know, $96. Now the Smitty Built comes with a 24 foot coiled hose and I like coiled hoses much better. They're easier, more compact to put away versus something like this that you kind of have to loop around and then tie it together and put it away this way. It's just easier to transport the coiled hoses and then their hose has an easy twist screw on brass inflator top, which this one is not. This one is your quick connect. But that's just preference though. A lot of people like the screw on type because you get a much tighter connection, but other people like quick connect much better because you can put them on and take them off really quickly. I, I wanna test it out. I wanna see how fast this thing can pump up a tire from 15 PSI, which is what many of us bring it down to when we go off road. And I know some of you go even more than that, all the way back to normal tire pressure of 40 PSI. I've used a Smitty built one before. A friend of mine has it. We all use it on the trail and for me, it took about an average two minutes and 15 seconds to go from 15 PSI all the way up to 40 PSI. So about two minutes and 15 seconds per tire times four tires, you're looking at about nine minutes total. Now Gobich claims that their air compressor pumps up tires pretty quickly. They said on a regular vehicle, anyone running a 225 by 55 R16 tire, it'll pump up one of those tires from zero to 35 PSI in about 40 seconds. Now for SUVs, it's funny, they have a picture of a Jeep here. Anyone running about a 245 by 75 R17 tire, it'll go from zero to 35 PSI in about 70 seconds. Now for bigger vehicles like RVs or motorhomes, anyone running about a 245 by 75 R22.5 tire, it'll pump up one of those tires from zero to 80 PSI in about two minutes. And then for the bigger vehicles like your class A's, anyone running a 315 by 80 R22.5 tire, it'll pump up one of those tires from zero to 80 PSI in about five minutes. Well, we're about to find out today. All right, so the air compressor is plugged up to the battery, ready to go. Let me get the timer going and let's see how fast we can go from 15 PSI all the way up to 40. All right, we are at 40 and it took three minutes and five seconds.
three minutes. Three minutes and five seconds to be exact. So about 12 minutes and 20 seconds to inflate all four tires from 15 PSI all the way back to 40. And that's including the fact that I had to stop the air compressor once in a while to check the pressure, which got really annoying. So I would have to stop it, check the pressure, and then start it back up again. I, I That's why I like the trigger versions better, which I might have to modify the outlet of this so that I can use my hose where I have the trigger guard and I can kind of control the air and see how much pressure I'm getting every once in a while without having to turn this thing off. So is it worth it? Well, I don't know. That's up to you. It all depends on your budget and how much you want to spend on an air compressor. This runs about 160 bucks. 40 bucks more, you can get the Smitty Built one that a lot of people like. And how do you plan to use it? Are you wheeling every weekend? Are you needing to air down a lot and air back up again? And do you need to do that quickly? So if you're doing that, if you are going to need to air up constantly, like if you are hitting trails and then hitting pavement, got to air back up and then hitting a trail again, airing back down, and you're constantly doing that throughout the day, then I would probably spend a little bit more, well actually a lot more, to get like an onboard air compressor or even better, go get yourself an air tank because those things will inflate all your tires like two minutes, I believe, like it's fast. These are gonna take a little bit longer. Now personally, this is not gonna be my main off-road air backup compressor. I, I just think it's a little too slow for me. I have a four-way tire inflator and I would rather save the money and buy myself an air tank later and then be able to inflate those tires much, much quicker. Plus honestly, the trails we've hit so far, we haven't really seen a need to air down a lot. Like we can take a lot of these trails at our regular 40 PSI pressure. Although I will say it's much, much more comfortable to air down when you're going through trails, especially when you're hitting corrugated roads and you're bumping all over the place. Having your tires air down makes the ride a lot more comfortable. For me, this is going to be more so a backup. Like if we need to air up and I have no other way to do it, I'll bust this out. This is also good for when you're regular daily driving. I might keep this in the forerunner. If something happens and my wife gets a flat, we'll have an air compressor so we can kind of fix that. And then I can also use this for other outdoor activities because we don't always wheel. So this can be good for airing up air mattresses, inflatable paddle boards, inflatable kayaks, inflatable beach stuff. This will be great for that. But if you are one of those people that are hardcore wheelers, this is probably not going to be for you. And you've probably already thought about different solutions that will air up your tires a lot faster, whether that's a dual air compressor on board with ARB, or if you're getting a Viair system that has an air compressor and a tank, or if you're using one of those power tanks that you just get filled up at your local hardware store and that's what you use. There's a lot of faster methods to air up a tire. Again, this is going to be more so for you're just you're you basically need air and you are not in a rush and maybe you don't want to spend a lot of money on an air compressor because you don't use it very much for me that works because I'm trying to build my vehicle to be more tourer than rock crawler right so we don't really use air compressors as often but it's good to have because there are times where we need it i will say that if you drive a vehicle with bigger tires and you just need an air compressor just for emergency and as a backup do not do not buy those really cheap air compressors that you might find at Lowe's or Home Depot or Advance Auto. Like those are made for regular vehicles. Like I tried to pump up one of my tires with one of those cobalt ones and it overheated the thing and it took like eight minutes just to get it back to pressure. Like those are just not worth it. They're just not powerful enough. Get one of these if that's what you just really need it for. It's just some peace of mind and some way to air your tires back up in the event that you have a flat on the road or something. That's This is good for that. But otherwise, off-roading, wheeling, this is probably not going to be the best thing. But anyway, that's it. I hope you got the information you needed on whether or not it's worth buying a generic air compressor. If you did like this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Are you still here? All right, because I kind of want to throw something out into the universe, and I'm, I'm really just testing the waters, but I am considering selling the Jeep. And no, the channel's not going anywhere. We're still overlanding. We're still camping. It's just I have a different project in mind, and the way to accomplish that is to first sell this vehicle 
off. If you follow this channel, then you've seen the evolution of this Jeep. And if you've ever looked at it and said, man, I would love a Jeep like that. And you are interested in buying an off-road vehicle that's already ready from the get-go, then hit me up on Instagram, Baptism Overland. There are going to be some caveats, like certain items that I am going to be keeping and certain ones that will be sold with the vehicle. But I'll give you all the details on that if you hit me up. If it's something that interests you, go ahead and hit me up. Yeah, just throwing it out there. I don't know. It may not even happen. Okay, bye.